Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the High Level Release Radar, where we recap all the new releases from the week. I'm coming to you remote from La Paz, Mexico, Ryan, which is beautiful. <laughs> which you're looking is very, beautiful. you're looking the part, you know? I don't know if you can see that. that but, uh, it's a nice office. That's a nice office for the day. And uh, as soon as we get off this call... Let me show you where I'm heading. Oh, yeah. That's, That's looking right. good. Some good snorkeling in there. No waves. Yep. Though, you know. No waves, but it'll, we'll make do. We will make do. It's Friday again, Ryan, which means it is time for us to dig into the releases. And we're heading into level up, but I feel like this week was especially heavy with yeah, some bangers. Um, I was expecting them to hold back more stuff, but uh, we've got a lot of inventory on on the secret list, so not to worry. We got stuff to share with you as well. Okay, let me share. Let me let me send us live into the group real quick. Awesome. And we'll chime in, everybody. Room. We get brownie points and bonuses based on comments. Uh, so <laughs> that's right. We love to see you saying hi. So please let us know if you can see us. If you can hear us, say hello in the chat. Uh, we always love to see your faces and your comments pop up. All right, Ryan, let's dip into the first release of the week. Workflow, branches, and pause execution for marketplace action. Yeah. yeah I feel like there's multiple updates in here. This is kind of multiple updates into one. Essentially, if, if, you're, building, um, if you're building marketplace applications in, in the app marketplace, you can now create branches, like predefined branches um, based mm. on certain conditions. And then you can also pause the execution of certain things, including code, which uh, we'll get into here, I believe, in the next slide or the one thereafter. Uh, actually, the slide after this shows an example of what that would look like. So if you've mm -hmm. got an app that creates a, wor a workflow action, then you can kind of predefine uh, what what the branches look like, similar to how we do it with some of the WhatsApp stuff and, and branching stuff and stuff off into things that make sense for that action. Nice. Uh, app, play, app Marketplace continues to get more and more robust for builders. More and more apps continually get added. We're in the thousands now. If you haven't checked out direct or marketplace.gohello.com, there's all sorts of awesome ways that you can enhance your high-level experience with these third-party apps. Yeah, and so this is the setting in the app marketplace. Again, if you're a developer, you kind of understand this, where you can hold a contact in a certain place until another webhook another webhook comes in and tells it to move forward. Um, so a lot of really cool granular control over the experience of a contact working through an automation. Nice, love it. Uh, and then here's, I think, another screenshot for that same thing. Yeah, this is this is the ability to add custom code to marketplace uh, actions as well. So. Very cool. Developers so, rejoice. Developers rejoice. That's right. Um, next up, we have another update for workflows. We can now allow multiple opportunities. This one's pretty interesting. Yeah. So you can kind of think about it. in the real estate space, they kind of treat opportunities as deals. Maybe you have, um, irrespective of the contacts, you have different deals that are kind of going through the same thing with the same contact. Um, so this sort of allows to have multiple opportunities within one workflow. Nice. Yeah. Um, more and more robust for sure. We've got some, I don't know if they'll be in this deck, but man, there's some great stuff going on all over the app, uh, including snapshots and blogs now, which is something that's pretty awesome. We've been waiting for on our team for sure. We're going to do some fun stuff with this, but we can now package up blogs as part of our snapshots. Yeah. That one's pretty straightforward. If you've been waiting for that, check it out. And we also have preview URL and updated date enhancements. Yeah, this one was a little bit uh, tough to, to work out. But the, the bottom line is that when you're in the settings for the blog, um, you now have direct links to where that blog is going, uh, as well as a preview link right there as well. So you don't have to like go into the builder and then go to the preview. Um, so it's quality of life updates for sure. Sweet. Next up, we've got, oh, this one's great. So if you're using the chat widget in WhatsApp mode, it's going to change the icon to be the WhatsApp icon, which is a very small but critical update in my opinion. Uh, it's kind of what's expected. Yes, you can thank Chase for lobbying for that one, um, but great update. Love it. WhatsApp is getting more and more robust by the day. 
We've got uh, another update to the chat widget where we've got the consent box default setting that you can now customize, right? You can put, you can make that say whatever you want. Yeah, you can you can make it say whatever you want, but the key here is that you can default it to be on or off. Mm. Um, I think there's some HIPAA requirements um, on the back end that um, necessitated this update. So that's nice. If you're HIPAA, you know what we're what we're talking about. Great. Today's the day. Mm -hmm. um, workflows. We've got WhatsApp number trigger. So oh, this is cool, right? Because now if I have multiple, we can make multiple chat widgets now. So if I have multiple WhatsApp chat widgets, I can now filter by the number in my workflow to fire things off for messages coming from one number and not another, correct? Exactly. That That's just it, being able to choose what's going to actually kick that automation off. Very sweet. Um, we've got another update for WhatsApp. We now have snippet support in what WhatsApp workflow actions which is great. Snippets are small but mighty. I think we we both share our love for snippets, and now we can drop them in our WhatsApp actions uh, for those free messages that can go out within an active conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Key nice. distinction there. These are not. Uh, there there are like WhatsApp template like marketing templates that they sort of approve, and then you'd pay for that. This has to do with when you're already in a conversation, like a service conversation. You have free messages. You're just you've got some quick templates to go by that can basically be anything. Yeah, this yeah. is a nice little feature update there. Um, conversations got some new filter ability. You can now view and filter by followers, which is pretty convenient. Yep, uh, you can do it right within the conversation. And then you can also look at the followers uh, on the right hand pane there on the next slide, you'll see that. So all right, let's flip it forward. Yeah, cool. Yeah, this is great, right? Because if you know that you're being added to conversations as a follower, you want to just filter the stuff that you need to see. And uh, now you can do that. Makes a ton of sense. Uh, the CRM side of things got another update with mission critical OTP protection. Ryan, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> yeah. What does that mean? I threw in some acronyms just to throw you off. So <laughs> OTP stands for one time password. It's sort of like when you go to log in and they say, we're going to text you. And then you take that code and you put it back in. That's OTP. Um, this is cool for um, protecting the the email address of the user. So when you're when you're making mission critical changes, like changing somebody's email address, it's now going to be prompting you for that one time uh, password to the original address, so that you know in the unlikely event that your your system gets hacked somehow, they can't just start changing all the email addresses without any notification or a stopgap. Nice. Yeah. Little extra security is always a good thing. Oh yeah, and this is just what that looks like. Just to remind everybody, it's just the code you put in from the email or the phone number. Yeah, lovely little UX there, love it. Mm -hmm. uh, payments got an update. We have CSV export upgrade for transactions, subscriptions, and orders. Yeah, the, there's kind of a lot going on here. I'm not gonna get into everything, but I think the, the takeaway here is that there's a lot of, uh, there's some data and things that were missing that weren't grouped together properly. Um, or, or at least not organized in a way that was as useful as it could be. And now they are. So if you're, if you do anything with exporting transactions, you're importing them into other systems uh, via CSV, um, got some great upgrades for you there, including a lot of tax information uh, and that, which I know was a, a big ask. Sweet. Um, love it. Our next update is for calendars. This one was a big one. I think this dropped today, right? We've now yeah. have the personal calendar type which uh, why don't you walk us through how that differs from the other calendars that are in there? Yeah, so I think the idea here was to simplify the calendars and, and we're gonna continue doing that. Um, but instead of like a simple or an event or whatever it, it was called previously, it's now called a personal booking. So this is built for one-to-one -one type meetings. Um, so really, again, it just simplifies how you create a calendar in a, in a way that sort of makes sense to most users. Uh, they don't want to schedule an event. They just want to have like a personal uh, sort of meeting calendar for themselves. Yeah. So I think anybody that's been using Calendly or something like that is going to feel very at home with creating one of these types of calendars, which can, correct me if I'm wrong, spin up dynamic Zoom meetings yeah. for the was as well. That was a big missing link where it's like, well, we had to do round robin in order to get the dynamic URLs for Zoom and, and Google Meet, et cetera. And now that's all in one place. 
Absolutely. So this is going to be exciting. I'm excited to see how many of these basic calendars or personal calendars get created. I think every business is probably using them. Uh, and so this should be something that becomes very frequently used. Uh, so great work on the calendar team there. Uh, wow, this one is fantastic. <laughs> I think this is so cool. Um, let's talk about, so this is an add-on to a feature that rolled out not too long ago, which is the ability to transfer your account, right? A lot of times folks are a sub account within an agency account and they want to be for whatever reason moved to somebody else's agency account both parties are consenting and so we you know used to have to go through support and it was annoying and tickets were created and you know we had to manually transplant them in the back end well we created the easy button for that right as long as both accounts agree to it you can now transfer your own accounts between agency accounts now we have another option the eject button uh which is is a fun name that we uh, debated on internally and, and seems like everybody loves it, which is pretty cool, right? Because this is uh, what I like to call the incubation method, which is awesome, right? You get a client that, you know, potentially will open their own agency account, right? Let's say you work with a chiropractor. I've had this experience in the past. You've worked with a chiropractor who's been doing it for 40 years. They're a master of their trade. They love the idea of becoming somebody who starts selling their knowledge to other chiropractors, but they're not ready for their own agency account yet. So you say, cool, let me spin you up as an account in my account. You can pay me. And then when you're ready to go off on your own, we'll get you your own agency account. And now you can literally do that within your account without having to contact support. You click eject, it ejects them to their own agency account and automatically affiliates them to you. So now you're getting that 40% recurring commission from their new agency account that you just created for them without having to go through support. So yeah. I think uh, the reaction looks pretty positive around this one, Ryan. I think it's a great feature. I love the incubation method. It really is. And I'm sure you could think about other use cases too, where you know an agency is shutting down or consolidating or what have you, and this just smooths the entire process over. Um, and I, I love seeing all the automation behind this and not having to manually ask for it and get the devs involved uh, just magically happens. That's right. Pablo agrees. What's happening, Pablo? Thanks for saying, hey. Uh, yeah, we're excited to see how everybody puts that to use. Um, I think the auto affiliation is just fantastic. So oh, we've got a couple more screenshots of how nice and clean this looks. Yep. And uh, yeah, awesome little feature there. This one might be one of my favorite releases of the year. <laughs> we can now purchase domains right inside of High Level. Uh, Ryan, are you as stoked as I am? I, I am one? insanely stoked as somebody who has worked in hundreds, if not thousands, of GoDaddy and Namecheap accounts, <laughs> having to go to a different registrar to make edits in somebody else's behalf is a huge pain in the butt, huge time suck, and now... Um, it, we're bringing all that in-house. So, of course, you can purchase domains. Uh, and then once you do so, then you've got DNS control. You've got the ability to really simply link them to funnels and websites and all the different places that you'd want domains to kind of link and direct to. Uh, so, yeah, we got a Absolutely. couple of screenshots here. But, man, um, not only that, but there's uh, there's reselling on it as well. Mm -hmm. Um I think I missed that particular screenshot that was supposed to go there, but uh, you, you get the idea. You can mark this up as an agency um, and, and sell it to your, your sub accounts and then also yep. have all the control right there. Absolutely. I think a uh, couple of details. I've seen a lot of similar questions going on around this. So this whole thing mm -hmm. runs through Cloudflare, which is awesome. So the pricing comes from Cloudflare. The functionality comes from Cloudflare. We brought all that in app, uh, which is fantastic. And uh, this is just the beginning, right? So soon you will be able to migrate domains, existing domains in. Uh, I saw a lot of people asking that. Yes, you will be able to bring existing uh, domains that you already own into sub accounts very soon. Um, the who is lookup shows Cloudflare. It doesn't say anything about high level. I saw a bunch of people asking about that, which is also great. Good question. Yep, great question there. Um, and so, yeah, it's looking great. And the domains are, are, are racking up already, um, which I love to see because I've got a personal bet with Varun as far as how many domains are going to be purchased over the next. Oh, I can't even remember the time frame, but um, I, I think we're going to smash it. If you're like me, you're buying domains left and right for those future projects that are going to change the world someday, right? Um, <laughs> yeah. Now we can 
now we can buy them all right inside our high level account. There's a great meme about that. Um, every time the, the registration comes up. Uh, the last thing that I want to mention here, uh, there is a process to enable this. It's not like just automatic right away. So you need to go into um, the reselling options for your sub accounts and you can enable or disable this on a sub account basis. But first um, you have to go agency account settings, business tab, right? Or whatever yes. that first tab is, yes. toggle it on. Then you can go set all the reselling and all of that, correct? Ex yes, exactly. Yeah. Cool. Uh, domains are live. Test it out, give it a whirl, <laughs> add some margin in there, make some money on domains. It's a big day. Uh, a lot of us have been waiting for it for a long time. All right, it is that time of the show where we get to tease a couple of things that are coming soon. We've got upcoming releases that make you dance. <laughs> Ryan, sounds like they're going to be some I was pressed ones. for what time on this first? one. My bad. Uh, Custom widgets. Oh, this is a great one. Custom widgets in the page builder. You want to explain what that means? Oh, man. I mean, this is like, um, this is one of my dreams to, to be able to bring in external app functionality right into the page builder. So it kind of works if you're familiar with plugins uh, for WordPress, it works in a similar type of way. Although I would say this UX is way better, just being able to drag and drop something where you want it. Um, and it provides a ton of um, expandability, if that's a word, uh, for developers to make pages look even better. So if there's some amazing, uh, I don't know, like a, a photo carousel or something, you can bring that in. Um, bring in all, all kinds of different um, external sort of coded widgets and have them display right there in the UX. Absolutely. And this is pretty timely considering all the drama that's going down in WordPress land. I don't know if you follow yeah. any of that, Ryan, but holy yep. smokes. We're not going to get into that here, but uh, <laughs> yes, you will very yes. soon be able to build widgets for the high level builder. Um, and yeah, we're going to open up that ecosystem and uh, continue to make the builders better and better. Oh yeah. Let's see what else Ryan has for us. We've got coming soon social planner on mobile. This is going to be really awesome. And the UX is looking great already. Yeah. Uh, I actually have some internal projects that I think will will benefit from this greatly as well. Uh, Chase and I were just noodling on a new video type that we're working on. And so anyway, the idea here being is that maybe you got a technician out in the field or you're at an event, you can create a post right from the mobile app. Of course, use the camera. It will bring that media into the media storage area as well and uh, you know, post it out on all the socials. Absolutely. I think this is awesome. The social planner continues to get better and better. If you haven't checked it out, definitely give it a whirl. It's gotten so many new features since its release. Um, and there's some really advanced features coming. We just rolled out analytics, which is looking great. They're going to get more robust. We're going to have, uh, in addition to the schedule content, we're going to be able to schedule categories very soon. And it's now all coming to the mobile experience as well. Uh, which is going to be awesome. Yeah. I mean, this product is really getting to parity pretty quickly. And I think we're going to really see it take off uh, as we head into 2025. And, and by the way, it, it can't be overstated that the cooperation between the two teams, because it's not like they just build the, the social planner, it magically comes over to mobile and works with calendars and all this thing. The team works so well together to make all this come together nicely so that it looks simple. Um, but a lot of huge hard work and, you know, problem solving going on behind the scenes. So big shout out to the team for working so hard on that stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, all right. I believe that's our last slide for it the is. week. So as <laughs> always, let us know what was your favorite release, what you're most excited to see roll out. We do have a very big event happening in just a couple of weeks in Dallas, uh, summit.gohighlevel.com. I think there are still a handful of tickets left and literally it's just down to a handful now. Um, so if you want to be there, head over to summit.gohighlevel.com, grab your tickets before they're gone. Ryan and I will be there. And uh, until then, we'll see you next week. See you, Chase. Be safe and uh, watch out for the sharks, okay? That's right. I might see